Hey guys, Jonathan here, and I've come all the way down to Brighton to visit Louis Cole. Hello. Because you uh, sent us some pictures of the workshop, you want some help getting it sorted? I would love some help. I've got a newborn baby, and uh, I'm struggling to find the time to organise my space. I've got a project that I'm about to work on, I'm converting my yeah, yeah. 1970s Beetle to electric. But yeah, I've just my garage is a mess, and... Uh, yeah, I need some help organising. Yeah, well it's a good space. As soon as I saw the pictures, I was excited to get my teeth into it and help you get it sorted. Mm. Where do you think we should start? Well, I can see you've got a bit of a bench going already there, so I feel like that's where you're going to want to have everything organised, that mm -hmm. way you can still get a car in here and, and work on it. Yeah, I could clear all that off. And then, and then I've uh, seen a few Makita power tools about yeah, the place. Yeah, I've got this big bag of Makita tools, but obviously they're just thrown in there right now. I don't know what's charged or I'm going to start damaging them and throwing them in there. So. Yeah, yeah, we can do better than that. And you've got a good selection of these tools here, haven't you? You've got a full set of Makita power tools. So, yeah. We'll start there then. We know get, how to Getting these those mounted, out. yeah, getting yeah. these mounted would be amazing. Brilliant. Right, well, let's get that back area clear. Okay. And then I can see the blank canvas. Fantastic. Right, so we've cleared all the workshop and it is looking much cleaner and easier to work with. We've got a nice blank canvas. And as we said with Louis, we're gonna start with the Makita power tools. That's the thing we're gonna get organized right now, get them all dialed up, up on the wall. And we're gonna do that with some of these Santa Head IKEA frames. Now we've done a few videos on these, go and check them out. We've got all sorts of builds using these, but we've never used them for power tools. And the problem is that the frame is a little bit too narrow. This is about, you know, 100, 120 mil wide. It's kind of widest point, this grinder. And these frames are about 60 mil, which is not gonna work unless we put two back to back. They're cheap enough that we can put two back to back. And all we need to do then is add a piece of timber in the back to make it a bit more solid, hold it all together. Then we'll use some heavy duty tape around the outside. We'll pin the timber in place and that'll give us a really nice stout frame. We can then mount on the wall and organize all the power tools and it should look epic. And it's dead easy to take down and move to another spot, which is what Louis wanted. So let's get into it. Right, so that is both frames all done. We've used the same technique for both of them. So it's literally pinned the back in, so it's nice and solid, taped two like layers of this heavy duty tape. And that is all you need really. They're really solid frames and they're gonna mount on the wall nicely. So that's all sorted, ready for some tools. Now these are the tools that go in the frames. These are all of Louis's uh, Makita tools. So we've got like an impact gun and a combi drill. They're like essential tools. Then we've got the grinder, recip saw, blower, also essential, but a proper like deep shape. So I'm really glad we've gone for these deep tool panels, which is really good. Uh, a couple of other bits, we've got an impact gun, half inch as well, and a torch. So that's everything we need to put in the tool frames. All we've got to do now is a layout. Right, so that's all the layout sorted. I'm pretty happy with that. We've got a good balance. So we've got all of the drills on this panel here. I've got space for all of the finger pulls, which is really good. And over here, I've got some of the bigger items. I've got the two saws, basically, and then I've got the blower. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's a good balance layout. All I'm gonna need now is one of our cutting kits. Now these come free with orders over 60 pounds. You can buy these separately too. It's got everything I'm gonna need in here. So it's got the anti-cut gloves, which are essential. It's got the scalpel, five blades. It's got the forceps for putting the blades on the scalpel. It's got instructions and a sticker. So that's everything you're gonna need and it's everything I'm gonna need. So let's get to cutting. Right then, so I've cut most of the tools. Yeah, I'm back. And the uh, baby's okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's feeding right now, so I'm, I've got some time. Ah, oh, good on you. Right. Be a part of this. So, 
I'll show you how we got to this point anyway. It's important okay. you see, because I've saved that drill for yeah, you. Yeah, I'm going to carefully watch the technique because I really don't want to mess this up. So all you have to do is place it where you want it to go, get your glove on, and then just use one of the scalpels in the cutting pack. Mm -hmm. And then you literally just trace cut around it. And we're not cutting very deep. You're literally just using it like a pencil. Mm -hmm. So you're just keeping it as vertical as possible. That is the trick, vertical. Once you've gone all the way around though, you take out the way. And this okay. is kind of what you should be left with. You know, no visual indication I've even cut there until yeah. you press down. Okay. And then all you have to do then is go back. And for this, I'm cutting all the way through this 50 mil layer. Yeah. So I just have to keep going round and round until I've cut all the way through. And it, will it pretty much stick to that, that it will, original line? It can veer off. Okay, the so the trick still... is to press on the foam and just expose the, the cut you've made, just to make right. sure you can yeah. follow it. Yeah, yeah, okay. And that's pretty much through there. It should be pretty close. Oh, lovely. And then obviously you can see anywhere that we've not got quite through, I can go back and just trim it in. Right, so we'll call that done for me. So, Let's you've play. seen the process. All right, I think I've got it. Yeah, so Hopefully. first thing you need is this glove. This saves a lot of damage, I tell you. I, I am a little bit clumsy, so. You, you uh, definitely want an anti-cut glove then. Yeah. A lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Right. <laughs> this is kind of, I'm kind of nervous. So just like a pencil. Just like start. a pencil, yeah. I'll come back and trim it in, so don't, don't be too worried. Is this looking all right? Yeah, it's looking good. Wow, it's quite, it's quite, Yeah, no, that's cut, looking good. It cuts quite easy. Yeah. And like I say, at this point, you don't have to go deep at all. You're just literally getting that, capturing the silhouette, really. Yeah. Really? That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's probably the hardest bit to be fair. So you can kind of, the, what you've done there, what most people don't do on the first attempt is you've yeah. got a single cut all the way around. Okay. But that's really good. All right. And then I just keep. Like, exactly like that. Press on the foam. You can see the cut you made and then just kind of follow it around. I noticed you were doing almost like angling the knife the other way a bit, cutting some of it. Like that, like up. Yeah. Yeah, I was, wasn't I? Yeah. I probably did that even subconsciously, but it's. Um... Oh, it does actually feel much smoother doing that. I was kind of scared, but I think you're right. It's, it, it feels like it would be hard to completely mess up. And like you said, it's, there's, it's, you don't have to worry, it's a little bit out. Yeah, exactly. These frames here, just to ballpark it for like a viewer, if they're looking at watching this video, wondering how much this it costs. So the frames, the two IKEA Santa head frames are eight quid each. So you've got 16 pounds worth of frames and then a sheet of foam, because this is 50 mil, is 25. And then you'd cut it in half and you'd have enough. So this whole panel here built is 35, 41, 41 quid. And then you've got that so and it's like- it. So worth it. If you got that, if someone CNC made that for you, like on a, on a, you know, literally did the design, scanned the tools, you'd probably be looking at three, 400 quid. I've been examining the dynamics of what used to be called the con game. Right, uh, uh, where are you getting to? I don't know, think a bit more? No, you're nearly there, look. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll pull out. There you go. Try the drill, because it might be okay. You can see that the drill is a bit... I've done it too tight, look. Not That's too loose. That's ideal. No, well, you see what we need to do here? We we'll just do a little step down. So I'll just cut around that shape there. And yeah. then you can see if you push your finger down there, you can peel that back. Just peel out about like one layer. It takes a little bit of you to kind of like hook your finger underneath. How deep am I going? But only a 10 mil, 20 mil. It's oh, hard to they're... get it started. If you want, I'll try and... Oh, because there's different layers? Yeah. I don't know That's what it. I did there. Is that it? No, no, you've pulled, you've pulled out about 10 mil. Is that not enough? Yes. You can see already that'll sit a bit better. Yeah. So that, that's, that's pretty good. Right. All done. And that looks mint, that does, mate. That is your first attempt. It's all right. I've, it's all right. Yeah, it's good. You've it? been well and truly thrown in the deep end <laughs> because a power tool for your first ever go of shadow foam is like, that's intermediate level. You can help clean up a little bit and then... Yeah. I should have started you off with a spanner or something <laughs> a bit easier, but you know, all right. I think you've, you've done great with that. Cheers. So all we've got to do now is get them on the wall. Let's do it. Right, so they're up on the wall. We use plugs and screws and just little brackets, but they're proper solid, so I'm really happy with that. 
and it's looking really good. I love the effect of having them on the brickwork. It looks really industrial, but we've got a bit of a blank space here that for me is crying out for some logos. And I did bring an extra frame. So this is the exact same as these. It's an Ikea Santa head frame, but we've pinned a back on it, a solid back. We've added a couple of D loops. So this will hang on the wall nice and easy. And I think something about there with the Fun For Louie logo in it and the Shadow Foam logo in it should look top notch. So let's get to cutting. <laughs> So there we go, a lot of foam cutting later, and I think that corner at least is looking smart. What do you reckon? Honestly, I cannot get the grin off my face. It's it's so rewarding seeing just everything organized yeah. like that. Just easy access, just being able to like grab them. And I like you said earlier, I think the, the teal of the Makita power tools and the orange foam yeah. really pops, looks so good. I wasn't sure myself, but yeah. seeing it now, it looks good and I love the matte black frames against the brickwork. Yeah. It's a really cool like aesthetic in here. That was pretty much most of the Makita stuff and then there was a couple of big bits we couldn't put in foam. So we've just put them on some like wall brackets. It's nice to have a proper location for them. But you know, not everything has to go in foam. So hopefully they look nice. I think the kind of nice balance on that wall with them there. Yeah, and we last minute uh, decided to do the Fun For Louis logo and I, I managed to kind of print off a stencil to do. And honestly, this looks really good. Like this yeah. is, yeah. I love the fact that it's it's literally all just with a scalpel, all by hand, as you've seen, nice and simple, just with a normal printer, but it kind of looks like it's been done on a laser or something. And I, yeah. I'm not, but it's not hard, it's just, you're just following, methodically following the process, you know, so definitely, I, I'm glad we brought that extra frame, because yeah. that was a, like a bit of a last minute addition, really, but no, it does fill up that space really well, doesn't it? Yeah, I love it, love it. Yeah, and Karen, right. Nate and Eamon popped in and had a quick look at it, and they yeah. were loving it as well. What? Oh, this is awesome! <laughs> Can I touch it? I feel like they're a little bit jealous because, uh, you know, who wouldn't be? <laughs> <laughs> well, when they see the whole finished workshop, which is going to be part two. So part two is going to be taking this to a another level. You're not going to want to miss it. That's flipping awesome. That's good timing. Yes, it's half one and we've got the toolboxes. We're waiting on a big delivery, so make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon so you don't miss that part two video, which is coming very soon. Go and check out Fun For Louie, Louie Cole's channel. All of the links for this stuff is down in the description. You're gonna love seeing Louie's view of getting this set up, and he's got an amazing project on as well at the minute, converting a VW Beetle over to electric with Tesla batteries, which is something I can't wait to see finished, so. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Go and check that out. See you in we'll... the next video. Yeah, see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like that video, why not check out some of our others? We've got new videos coming out every week. And Colin Furs, what's the quickest way for people to see these videos? That's Subscribe. It.